second opinions on value. And we were, we're a little slow for a little bit there, but now we're starting to see a little more activity. Is that you're starting to see the same? Uh, showings, appointments, did that? Did, did, did you get a chance to look at those at all? Or? I did. So just the feeling I have. Uh, last Wednesday, we had, uh, Jenny did her, um, her training there with uh, an in-office in um, phone call, I guess, really prospecting. And, and the people were asking people at home to do that as well. Did anybody, how many people here, Jenny? I'm, I'm guessing 20 or so. How many people were at the office here? Oh, 20 or so? Or was it 30? It was 20 or so. And the people that were here, it was funny because they never picked up the phone before, but they, they wanted to listen to somebody else talk on the phone, but they didn't want to do it themselves, right? But that's okay. So um, I, that, I don't know. I thought it was good. What was the feedback? They loved it. They all said they wanted to come to the office. And so, so people want to come to the office and do it again, right? So that's uh, so. Answer your question, then, Caitlin. You're saying how to go last week. So I think it's something we want to try for for this uh, for this time. I'll do it again next week. Okay. Next week. Yes, we're not not this week. Next week, <laughs> following week, right? Okay. okay. So I had two topics. Either digital checklist or do more prospecting. I think the prospecting thing would be we. No, I don't know. Just, just this makes perfect. So more often. Because it's a, it's amazing. Like if you've never done it before, you're nervous as heck, right? But it's once you've done it once or twice, or you hear someone else do it, you think I can do a better job than that person. So you get on the phone, and you do it, right? <laughs> is, that, is that not is that not, not true? You listen to somebody else, and I can do better than that, and you do it, right? And you start you start off by phone phone your mother, phone your brother, phone your sister, phone like you know, just get over, just just get over it. And it's not prospecting. Basically, it is prospecting, but it's follow up. And it's one of the pillars, and everybody else has all these pillars here. But has anybody noticed that the market's different this year than last? So, so you could do two things: you can do what you did last year, or you can do something new this year. Right? Edmund, they were talking about that type of prospecting is coming back, and even the top agents are getting back into. Yeah, I tell you. Even if they're not cold calling, they're calling. If they had a listing, they're now calling the areas to try to get another one, or they're calling their sphere heavily. But they were talking about. All right, so Kay Kaylin and I and the other girls, we have this thing all the time, old school, new school, old school, new school. And we've got the new school brokers come in there. It's new school this, new school that, and digital this, and digital that, and all the kind of stuff. And that and old school is like farming and, and just sold and just listed and door knocking and whatever else. And which one which one works best? I don't know. We talked about door knocking and these guys were like luxury brokers. And they said, yeah, I still... I'm door knocking, especially again. So Kane just came back from New York City. They're doing a convention there. And then the word down there was that uh, door knocking is coming back, especially for the luxury brand and the high high end guys, guys you see on TV, right? They were all million dollar listing guys, actually. Million dollar listing guys are actually out there. The channel is what they did to get started, what they're doing today. And it was all about the old school stuff. Old school door knocking. Television. You can do old school stuff with with new with new school technology, but uh, it's still you still have to talk to people, right? And these are talking to people that you don't know. So you got two people. You, you talk to people you know and people you don't know. So it worked out fine. Now I know two people um, last week. One fellow he decided that he brand new guy right out of the box. Brand new guys are good because they don't have that little voice in the back of their head saying that won't work. So he started a little farm area and he started door knocking the farm area and got himself a, a listing appointment, went in there and took the listing and got the listing on Friday. Keep in mind though, he's been doing this for three months every day. This isn't like he went one day and did it. He's doing it three months with negative, yeah. like rejection and then finally. That's right. So Kaylin's telling me that that he didn't just happen one day, he happened to phone and, and they showed up there. He's been delivering flyers to the area and, and he's door knocking the area and he's got himself a listing and the people are going to buy something as well. So what's the average commission nowadays? 20, 25,000. So there, there you go. Not bad. All right. So he picked an area and he, uh, he uh, did he flyer it too or just? Uh, he was starting with flyers. Who's, who was managing? Were you, were you helping him or who was helping him? So did he do, what did he do in this area? At first he would go with like the just sold, just listed data, like a MLS sheet. And then eventually he just started going out and just saying, like Perry looking to sell. Like he got rid of. Okay, so of the, so when he first door knocked the area, he had all the stats and he had all the preparation and had all the numbers and he could talk about this house sold and that house did this and this house did that. And then he got to a point, forget that, just knock on the door and just play it, right? And he keeps track of every house he's knocked on. And if he hasn't knocked on it, the next day he knock on the door, so that yeah. didn't open the door. All right. So, he's, done a little so he's, doing, he's doing real old school stuff, okay? So he's, 
in his twenties. He's a young kid. He's so he's got a list of uh, he's got a list of farm area, and he's keeping track of who he's talking to and who he missed and the houses he missed. He goes he goes back to those houses another time or or whatever else. Back in the old days, when we used to phone call. Guys would have we used to call the Bauer book. Remember, look at the old folks here. Remember the Bauer's <laughs> books? Doesn't make doesn't matter. But anyway, so so when you print out a list of their farm area, for instance, they'd have a list of all the people and all the phone numbers. Then what they would do is they would write down when they contacted them, when they didn't contact them, but they'd write down the time. And they had th three time slots. They had one first thing in the morning, they had one in the afternoon, one in the evening. So, so when they went to their farm area, they, they would talk to somebody that not only put the notes of what the person talked about, they put the time that they talked to them. So the next time they phoned them at the same time. So, and then people that they missed, he, he phoned them at a different time schedule. So like Mike Ferry says, you know, phone, phone call at nine o'clock or eight o'clock in the morning, phone call, phone call, phone call. But if you phone call that person and he's never there, never there, never there. If you keep track of that, phone that guy at six o'clock at night instead of eight o'clock in the morning, all of a sudden he's home. So, so you get yourself a pattern where, you, where you're doing enough times and you, you can realize what's what's the be best for your time, right? So, so there's a good one. Another one. Uh, so this fellow here was Doranaki. No one I was aware of, just uh, cold calling. Got himself an appointment just by cold calling, just cold calling strangers. Right. So, so stuff works and it's out there. So that's that's what we're talking about. So, this Wednesday, can we have what uh, for training? So we're doing training for the going to come and talk with the foreign tax team. okay so we're doing a presentation on wednesday and then the week after that jenny will come back and do her uh part two of the uh of the phone calling training so okay good all right so good news then the sun's starting to come out good news that the we're starting to see a little more activity uh good news is that the bank of canada also said that they're not going to be increasing the interest rates again and uh that's all good news uh good news we got a lot of people that uh that bought during the uh, during the peak, and today they can't. Well, today the 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 rates have gone up, and their payments have gone up by I don't know thousand fifteen hundred dollars a month, and maybe it's not such a good idea to live there anymore. Maybe they want to sell. So you may have clients like that. Um, back in the back in the twenty two twenty one, we we're saying that one in four properties are being bought by somebody buying a secondary property. So if that's true, that means twenty five percent of the buyers were buying secondary properties. You need to contact those folks and say, hey. Mark's not doing anything. You want to just bail out of that thing and uh, and try it again next next time, right? There's there's another conversation. I had a client on lease side. So uh, this is a Varan talking. Mm -hmm. So the lease side uh, probably sell for two point two. Yeah. Operators today, the my, my client lost it on a bully offer for two point five. Right. Okay. So Varan saying there's two point two property in lease side. Lease side. Uh, two point two multiple offers sold for two point five. Right. Nice. Uh, talking last night with an agent. <clears throat> last night, an agent had uh, four offers. Well, so you have any, anybody else out there? I know that we were representing buyers that were in the competition with, with agents mm. that had buyers that were in, in multiple offers. All right. So I'm I'm seeing more and more multiple more 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 multiples. Right. So it's it's out there. Right. <clears throat> and uh, and phone calling people. I mean, uh, you might think that everybody phone calls, but they don't. I'm looking at Susan here, and that. Uh, you know, Susan phones, uh, I don't know, three, four, or five times a week. And look at that, she's still alive. So. <laughs> no, 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 hey, no, nobody, nobody, uh, nobody shut her down or anything, right? A couple of other things you want to think about, and Vran's here, he'll, he'll sort of talk to me about it as well. But uh, the government is looking for input right now from, I guess, mortgage brokers and from the industry, probably realtors too, on uh, changes to the, uh, to the act <clears throat> for, uh, for the, the uh, qualifications for borrowing money. So this is another opportunity for you to talk about it. Remember, I, I try and tell everybody little things to talk about that you can put on Instagram or you can put on your Facebook or any little things, right? So I think a couple of weeks back, we talked about the yellow piece of paper for the for the trial taxes. Any, did anybody do that? And we do a little Instagram thing on that. Call people and tell them, right? 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 If you have if you have an uncle or an aunt, somebody who's been around for a long time, they've got no mortgage on their house, and you want to have that conversation with those people, right? So it's it's uh, it's there, right? And, and uh, you have to understand that it's reverse it's a reverse billing anyway. So that was what you should you should have been talking about that a couple of weeks back on Instagram. If not, you can do it this week. Um, just a reminder: everybody knows what we're, what we're talking about on the vacant tax, the yellow piece of paper, vacant tax, Toronto only four one six reverse billing, meaning it says. We're going to assume the property is vacant unless you tell us otherwise. 
So most people take that, throw in the garbage, don't even read it. I was talking to an agent on Friday. He got one in his house and said, did you read it? Did you read it? Did you read it? Oh, yeah, I have to do this. Did you read the whole thing? It says very clearly that we're going to assume it's vacant unless you tell us otherwise. So they're going to get a surprise on their taxes, right? Um, and then we talk. A confirmation on that one in case if you're selling later on, if they, somebody's asking for the confirmation, <clears throat> to it. yeah. So we've got a, yeah. So if you're selling a house and we haven't, I'm not happy with the clauses yet. So I'm waiting for Trevor or somebody to come up with one, but we haven't seen it yet. <clears throat> if you're selling a vacant property, be careful because somebody might, uh, somebody buying that property, and there might be a 1% extra tax on that uh, property for 2023. And unless it's disclosed, your buyer, your buyer that, that's hold, that holds the property is going to be responsible for it. And they're going to have to go after the original seller to get their money back. So be careful with that. Anyways, that, that was a topic we talked about. And then we talked about last week about the first time home buyers uh, program they've got. Something else you want to talk about on, on your Instagram. And this week, we're going to talk about the, the qualify, qualified um, things possibly changing. So if you're thinking about buying and you're concerned with the interest rates and you have to, you have the resources, you have the resources, but you're not, you know, you're on the fence because everybody tells you what, what, you know, to wait. So what, what the, um, the government's looking for is input is the qualifications, the stress test. They, right now the stress test is 2% and they want to relook at the stress test and maybe they should relook at the stress test as per the product that the people have not necessarily the, across the board, the product being is it a five-year uh, fixed mortgage? Is it a is it a uh, one-year open mortgage? Is it uh, is it uh, insured, not insured? All these things, right? Um, what they're considering in consultation is maybe maybe they'll charge two percent for the guy that's going to take a a, a one-year variable mortgage, but maybe they can do a one percent stress test and the guy is taking a five-year fixed because a five-year fix is 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 more consistent. It's it's safer bet rather than the variable so so they're thinking about changing that type of thing you never had it it's just it's on a five-year fix in the beginning when they bought it well sorry well five-year fix is never even stress test for for insured for insured well, well conventional they didn't no but insured they did right they did. and then no what they're also thinking about doing on the insured versus not insured and this is what you will be on instagram they're, they're thinking about changing the tds and gds to make it not only applicable for all mortgages both both conventional and non-conventional but also um for the um, yeah, for, for everything, right? They're, they're, they're talking about doing doing that case. So if that's if that happens, then that's going to maybe change their qualifying, right? So that's something you want to talk about as well. And then the third thing you're talking about is changing the ratio itself. Right now, it's what 44, 45? I don't know. You can... TDS. If it if, okay, right now the TDS, if it's if it's not. If it's not high ratio, it's up to the bank to decide. There's no law that says it has to be this. They have their own internal things that they talk about. And that's what Rand's saying. You sometimes you get 50%. Uh, but the government is coming in and saying, no, 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 we're going to make it for all mortgages uh, to qualify TDS and TDS, regardless of whether or not it's insured or not. And they're even considering looking at the TDS and, and GDS and maybe even reducing it. So the whole point of this here is for you to tell you, hey, give me a call. Maybe the, maybe the stress test is changing. Maybe things are changing. Give us a call by today rather than tomorrow. That's the whole purpose of it, all right? Well, that, that's that's coming down to that. Any more comments on anything on that? Or? There's going to be actually significant changes. There will be a significant process. If, if they do it, right? Yeah. And then they're also talking about having a, a loan-to-income ratio that they've never had before, and that's another another thing that will make it to less. And the thing I've read is it'll affect about 10% of the buyers. So 10% 10, 10 of the buyers won't be able to afford today. No, tomorrow, what they could afford today. Are they thinking about changing the amortization period also? 25 to 30 years? Not that I've heard. No. I mean, that's a good suggestion. I've not, that, that's been floated out there, but I haven't seen it in this particular case. I think that's a good idea, though. I think, I think it'll solve a lot of things. So right now, right now we're sitting with uh, 97 9,700 active listings, 4,600 are uh, condominium, 5,000 are freehold. Unfortunately, the sales right now, they're 2,700. Last year's 5,200 sales so far for the first uh, 29 days is minus 48%. And condominiums is minus 54 and freeholds are minus 44. So we're in, we're in a, I don't know, we're in a December market in January. 
right? But the, those things aren't going to, it's not going to be forever, right? It sounds like bad numbers, but it's not going to be forever. Uh, leases, same thing. Leases are actually up. Leases, uh, there's also 9,200 active uh, leases out there. And uh, they're sitting at 5,200. Last year's 4,900. So actually leases are up 5%. The freehold leases are up 8%. And the condo leases are up 3%. So we're starting to creep along there. It's it's starting to work out as well. Um, I'm just going to do these randomly as I go. <clears throat> realms, anybody played around with realms since uh, since they changed the date? One, one. So they make some, so they make some good changes, right? You, it's not mandatory, but they make some good changes. For instance, if you're going to be uh, broker loading in Realm, all you have to do is put in the role number, not all, but you put in the role number and it automatically uh, populates the listing with the legal description and the and the mailing address and the postal code and all that type of stuff. So that that's that's pretty slick. All right. So you had that before, right? Not not auto, not auto, not when you're broker loading. No. Can't you, can't you copy no. Well, you can copy and paste each line. You got to copy, copy and paste, copy and paste. Copy. With this here, you put in the put in the roll number, and it uh, comes up there. Yeah. Because of the legal description too. That probably owner's names too. I don't know. I have to I have to see what it can do there. Uh, in the future, when you do a uh, uh, realm, when you do the photos, anytime that somebody tries to take photos from someone else's listing, it's going to have a big watermark that says Centurion Percy Fulton on it. So you won't, so you won't be able to steal other people's, uh, won't be able to steal other people's photos as easily, right? They're all going to be water, they're all going to be watermarked. There's a, there's a program for those that are, are high tech. There's a program called Snipping Tool, but we'll talk about that later. <laughs> there's other ways to do it, right? And nothing Realm's going to do if, if you ask the girls to uh, broker load, uh, but just create a draft, like enter the draft. So that you can go in later on, you can look at the draft, you can change it or not change it. Right now, you can't do that. Right now, the girls have to change it, or the CSR has to change it. Or, but if, but in the future realm, both you or the agent can change it after it's been drafted. So that would be that's a good thing to get involved with that later on. The trust, uh, this stuff doesn't happen in April. A lot of stuff doesn't happen in April. I'm just going to give you the heads up just to see if you can somehow put it into words for your clients. But the government will be making changes and the changes on April 1st for uh, the, the Trust and Real Estate Act. <clears throat> Some of the changes they're going to be talking about will be the, um, <clears throat> I don't know, I don't know, I don't want to scare anybody, but they're going to give, uh, they're going to have RICO more powers to make administrative decisions. Right now, if, if RICO, if, yeah, if RICO wants to give you a fine, they have to go through a process. They have to go through a hearing. They have to go through all these processes, and they give you the fine and the way it goes. If they want to suspend your license, terminate your license, they got to go through a tribunal and go through a whole exercise to make that happen. Under the new rule, they won't be able to do that. Under the new rule, uh, Rico will be able to do administrative penalties for stuff that's pretty obvious without having to go through trial. You still have the option to to appeal, but they can just go ahead and give you a thousand dollar fine for doing something silly, right? That, that's where it's a black and white can argue. It's done. So they're going to give them the authority to do that. Um, same thing with your license. They can they can suspend your license without having to go through the tribunal. That's going to change. But the guy's pissed off with your name where he's going to give you the fine. Maybe. Um, you're talking about the... Um, I guess the big thing will affect you. There won't be customers anymore. There won't be customer agreements. It's going to be people are not represented. So that, that's going to be quite clear. That's going to come down. But the bigger one's going to be is the sellers can opt to disclose the contents of their offers or not. And I'm waiting for that to come down. I'm waiting for some type of software. There's got to be some, we could create one ourselves, but I'm pretty sure that uh, with this blockchain stuff coming around, maybe that maybe we're sort of, sort of connecting dots now, but um You'll be able to uh, to do an auction on properties if, if that's what you wish to make it happen. Anybody have any feeling on that? Whether or not the uh, contents of offers available to everybody does it, does it matter? I really don't care myself as long as they're replaced by the same rules, right? You understand what I'm saying here? Right now, you're not allowed to disclose contents of multiple offers, and in, in the future, you will be able to disclose the contents of the other offers. Everybody's okay with that? 
I thought everybody would be up, up in arms, no? I mean, that's what the public wanted anyway. I guess so, yeah. So you can't have the power of the negotiations gone, then everything, everybody has access to everything. Yeah, maybe, but um, but where I, where I don't know is uh, if I'm a buyer, maybe I don't want I don't want you to know what my offer is. I wonder if the buyer has any. Input. And these are things that we have to uh, we have to figure out. How many people are they going to use that? Seventy-two thousand. No, seriously, if, if, if you have to have a choice to use it, or are you it's your, it's your it's your seller's choice. I, th I think most people do it. I don't know. You guys tell me. If you had multiple offers, do you want to tell everybody what, what the competing offers are? No. Sometimes the other agent says, is it close to this or that? And then we just say yes, no. They don't really give a price. <laughs> <laughs> More than the asking price. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Exactly. No, the block I'm talking about is, uh, is, is this going to be the mandatory everybody to use it, or is going to be uh, like is it no? It's your seller's choice. Your seller, your seller can decide whether or not they want to disclose the contents of the offer or not. So it's up to you. And basically, the seller's going to ask you, right? So you're going to have to give them advice. The um, we had uh, remember we talked about the guy that stole the. Uh, the property like he, he impersonated the the seller and uh listed the property sold the property and, and away it goes <clears throat> we thought there was what somebody said there's two or three of them turns out there's 32 of them so far yeah. so there's quite a few of them and they're calling it organized crime so these guys here are organized crime for some reason they know that somebody's got a vacant place they know that they're out of the country and they pay some guy five thousand ten thousand dollars to be a, a straw buyer to pick some guy off the street the guy you know he does it they you know we they give him all the fake id you pretend you're this guy you say this you say that and uh, they pay the guy the money he does it and then they take the money they give him his five grand they take the rest and the lawyer is the same i'm sorry the lawyer what about the lawyer lawyers lawyers uh the lawyer's just like a real estate agent oh they don't check it real you don't check it <laughs> <laughs> no people want to blame somebody i mean if you're a crook you're a crook man you you you, you fooled everybody you fooled the lawyer you fooled the agent you fooled everybody i mean how what more can you do the guy shows you an id there's his picture's id what what more how can you prevent that no the lawyers were taken advantage of too you're, you're suggesting you're suggesting the lawyers are part of the gang no no lawyers no lawyers won't be involved no no I don't know. Well, the serious lawyers, they wouldn't, uh, you, you, if you were a serious lawyer and they are asking you for sure, them three different uh, IDs, they don't just uh, let you call and sign over you're finished. Yeah, no, the lawyers, the lawyers are, the lawyers do their job, right? <clears throat> now the insurance companies are saying, wait a minute here, 32 times, uh, this, what's the average price, million dollars? <clears throat> 32, that's $32 million of losses. The insurance companies are saying, you know what, we're not going to do this anymore. Because that, that's a huge loss. And that's just one city, right? And what are you paying? 500 bucks, $400 for insurance? <clears throat> so the insurance company's looking at it again, thinking, wait a minute, I'm not, sure, I'm not so sure we want to do that anymore. So keep an eye on that. Uh, rental prices in Canada, we know it went up 22%. Uh, I thought this was fun in uh, talking about how the market's picking up. Calgary, the market is picking up. The market's doing better. The Calgary market... Uh, they had uh, 29,000 homes sold in 2022, and they're expecting 2023 to be stronger than 2022. Now, the average price in Calgary is only 519,000, but still, they're saying how things are picked up, and Calgary was was doing quite bad with the oil prices and that, right? So they're picking up, and that's that's good news, and any good news is good news, right? It's good news for everybody. We talked to a couple weeks ago about uh, the Toronto Star and that, how they've got... Um, they promote properties like they'll, they'll actually have properties right on the right on the newspaper itself and basically it's from agents giving them properties to talk about <clears throat> this person here <clears throat> Janice Campbell it's called uh, GTA uh, Home Hunt it says here this property is listed for 1079 at 300 Oak Park Road it's near Taylor Creek and talks about its outdated one bedroom apartment it goes on to describe the property itself but my whole point here is that that they've talked about the property. They've got the name of the agent, and and they're, they're, they've filled the newspaper with script. 
So if you've got a property sitting there and you want to get some free advertising, I would get a hold of this girl here and I'd fire emails off to her saying, I've got this nice property here if you want to promote it. Just another pillar, just something to do. Doesn't doesn't, doesn't cost you anything and they're, and they're looking for people to to, uh, to talk about, all right? I mean, I'm talking about the Thomas Star and that, so I think that's that's good little publicity. If you've got a nice little listing, why not fire it off to, to, to the newspapers as well and see if you can get some traction there. Bank of Canada comments offer light at the end of the trouble. So as I said before about the uh, increases in the rates, the banks themselves are saying, this is Bank of Canada saying that uh, that's enough for now. We're not going to do it again for a while and just see how, how, the, how the market's been affected by what we've done. So that's something again you want to show your your uh, your sellers or your buyers, saying that the market's at an end. This is it. If your buyers are waiting for the bottom of the market, it's here. If, I don't know what what, what are the sellers waiting for. Why why would a seller wait to sell to try to get a higher price? I don't know. Why are sellers selling now? No. Nobody knows. Who's got a listing right now? We're all in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's buying homes anymore as demand drops to the lowest levels in years. I guess that's it, right? Nobody's buying right now. And they're talking about new homes. So nobody's buying new homes. New homes had 25,000 sales last year and uh, 23,000 were condominium. They only had like 4,000 freehold or, or non-condominium sales all last year that's interesting so that, that goes back to supply and demand right so there's 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 just not enough supply in that for the demand out there and some investors are making bad decisions as they wait lower rates i just i just did an exercise myself let's say you've got a client okay uh gotta think this i'm trying to get you guys to get listings, right do you have, anybody have any clients that's, that has condominium investments? Anybody have any clients that have their, their clients are renting out uh, condos, for instance? And do those same people have mortgages? Yeah. They do. Do you have anybody that doesn't have a mortgage on investment properties? You guys tell me. Let's say let's say you have a million dollar property investment property, right? No, let, let's say seven hundred thousand dollars condominium. You probably rent that condominium out for. 2200 right 2300 something like that so let's make it 2500 just for a round what's 2500 times uh, 12 Anybody know? how much 30 thousand thirty thousand mm -hmm. dollars maybe it wasn't high enough okay thirty thousand dollars but 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 you're gonna have twelve thousand dollars because you're paying the condos and you're paying you're paying the condo fees and you're paying the the taxes so your thirty thousand probably comes down to eighteen thousand right if that investor took that money and put it in the bank account today to, on 700,000, they're, they're getting 5% return on a GIC. So they can get $35,000 just by taking that same money and putting it in the bank account. All right. So, so, so the advice then, if you've got a client like that, the advice would be, well, you told me, what would the advice be? The advice would be to hang on to that place? Or the advice be to sell that place. I like it. You're making you're making like five. You're making thirty five thousand dollars a year without having to pay taxes or condo fees. You make, and and if the property value yeah. increased by five percent, okay, you're getting five percent, anyways, right? Yeah, never gonna buy real estate. No, no, I'm telling you guys, go to, go to your clients that they are sitting in that position, get them to sell. This is the whole point. My point. My point is, everybody will put up their hands and said they have mortgages. If you have mortgages, it's a different situation because it, it's all different. Somebody else is paying your mortgage. But if you got to that point where it's, it's not that stage, I, I don't know. Because, and I wouldn't have said that two weeks ago because you're already getting this one and a half, two percent interest, but now you're getting five. So, so things things have changed just a little bit, right? Does it make any sense or no? I know, I know the real reason that what you should be doing, of course, is going to that client and say, look, refinance, get 60% of the money, get that cash out, buy another place. That's what you should be doing. But it's just something to, to just some thoughts to, to think things through a little bit, right? And what they're saying here is that some investors are making bad decisions. So investors are sitting there, they're losing money. Prices aren't going up. What are they waiting for? 
are they are these, are these are the banks are saying that or some other people are saying that? no no this is some this is other people these are these are reporters saying this <clears throat> right just reporters right? they're, just, they're just saying like why why uh you know why bother right if you, uh, i'm going back to that one four people the only reason why investors buy property two reasons <clears throat> increase the like positive cash flow or increase appreciation so they've got a negative cash flow and appreciation is not there so why are they hanging on to these things? and what the article is saying here is that they, they somehow think that the prices are going to come back to 20 to, to february 2022 prices sure. anybody agree with that i think they will go to february 22 prices but it might not be until 2025 Anyway, some just try and get get the juices going. Try to think how can how you get a list sell list yourself properties, right? How is this selling for a loss? This is a newspaper article as well. And how is this selling for a loss? And um, if you've got a property that is selling for a loss, there's certain things you must do. You have to talk to Nelson or myself. Uh, but basically, uh, we're in control, so we really don't care that uh, the price. I should say we don't care. We. We care the guy's losing money, but uh, as far as selling the house goes, we don't care because as long as we have 5% deposit, we're going to get paid our money and the banks themselves are going to have to eat the shortfall. So if you got a client that's over leveraged, well, I can't sell your house because you have more mortgage than house. No, it's not the case. We can sell the house. <clears throat> Just so we have to do some negotiations and we have to get somebody to do some bending. We have to get the banks to, uh, to negotiate the discharges and things like that. There are things we can do. So just don't walk away from those situations if you come across them. Combo buyers are Morris and Niagara region, same thing. These people bought a lot of pre-construction there, and now they're having issues too because the the uh, the, the value is not there and and the qualifications aren't there. Where are homes selling the fastest? This is just strictly days on the market. Days on the market right now for December. And Ajax was thirty-seven days on the market. See if you see a pattern. Thirty-seven days on the market. Whitby, 28 days on the market. Oshawa, 30 days on the market. Vaughn, 47 days on the market. Caledon, 60 days on the market. So the, the farther you're getting out, the longer it's taking. Right? Niagara Falls, 42, bar, 42 days. St. Catharines, 43 days. And if you go right downtown Toronto, Toronto is 40 days. So it's not much better. No, it's both different different areas, different different days on the market, right? Uh, this chat CP thing I talked with this last week or the week before. Anybody just this has nothing to do with real estate. It's told it's this, this chat bot. Anybody heard about that yet? Chat, chat DPT. So what what it does? <clears throat> it's an app. It's not even an app. So it's a web page. You type in a description of a property and and the the computer will give you a uh, uh, an ad for the property. It will give a description. If you if if you're a kid and you're doing a something on what did I say last week, you're doing something with William Shakespeare. You can say you know tell me about tell me about William Shakespeare, and I'll give you a whole little a whole little thing. The kid just has to copy and paste it. So watch out for your kids, right? Um, they're saying here that if Google, I don't know how, how it's going to relate to real estate, although you can use it to write up your ads and things like that, just for fun. But uh, Microsoft has put $10 billion into this company. So if, if anybody's in the stock market, that's something you want to think about. And they're saying that things like Google, you go to Google right now and you Google something and they're saying like, tell me about Shakespeare. Once you get past all the ads and all the garbage and all the paid ads and all the stuff, you might, you might finally get to the thing that you're looking for. This here, there's no ads, nothing. You say, give me something for Shakespeare and get you right away with no ads, nothing. So that's why they're saying that it's, it's going to be a game changer. It's going to change the whole way things are done. Yeah. Like you said last week on a listing description. Right now it's free. Just to test it out, you get like modern luxury condo, write a listing description, and it made me like this nice little. It like takes a few words and then it like fluffed it up and made a listing description. We've been testing it with like Instagram captions. Yeah. So if you're doing a feature sheet and you're a little stuck yeah, on words and stuff like that, just just put in like. Uh, please write an ad for this property, three bedroom, and then you put in the description, whatever it is. You don't even you don't, tell it what tone you want. You don't, yeah, you don't put the description. You just say what it has, right? And then it writes out this this dialogue, and away you go. So it's kind of cool. Yeah, you can search for if you want to get the blogging, listing description. Like, you can use it for anywhere. They're kind of getting worried about high school 
students and stuff using it now, so you can probably write an essay. Yeah, they'll write about it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They, I think the schools are worried about it because they don't know how that's going to affect essay writing now, and then copyright issues. No idea, but. Honestly, it's a really good tool for us to be. They were talking a lot about that in Min and how it's coming, and they're using a lot in the U.S. right now. So it's not something to be scared of. It's this is very this, this, you're talking about this chat thing here. Yeah, yeah. So Kevin's okay, saying they're down in New York City. They're talking about this chat thing as well. So have a look oh, at it. Anyway. Like, I know that somebody somebody tried to download the app the other day there, and it was busy. So it's it's uh, it gets it's it's worldwide. So it's it's very 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 busy. They had over a million people sign up in the first day for the app, so it got blocked. So every so often you have to check if people sign up for it, and it's yeah. free. So that's free for now. So you know, we'll see what happens. So anyways, it's nothing to do with real estate. Then might be a tool for you, right? <clears throat> a couple of things that, that uh, you want to be aware of for your clients. Uh, selling a home, you know how to qualify for capital gains exemption. Everybody knows how capital gains exemptions works. Does everybody here know that in case somebody asks your clients? So if you have a property that's not your residential, it's not your primary property, the real estate property, that's your secondary property, your rental property, you go to sell it, you're going to be subject to capital gains, right? Capital gains is, is taxed at 50% of the gain and um, at, at your personal tax level. So if you're at a 20% tax level or let's say 50% tax level, then you're paying 50% of 50% of the capital gain or 25%, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> New rule this year. Regardless of whether it's a principal residence or not, if you buy a house and sell it within 12 months, you're subject to taxes on the full amount as a income, not as a capital gain. That's a new rule this year, right? Is everybody okay with that one? <laughs> so if somebody buys a property, I don't care what the reason, let's say they buy a property and move in and then they find out they don't like the neighbor next door and they sell the house. They sell the house within a year. Obviously, obviously, you're not going to make any profit. But had they, if they were to make a profit, that profit would be 100% taxable, even though it's your principal residence, if they sell it within 12 months. There's certain circumstances, you know, there's circum circumstances, some circumstances that they'll close their eyes to, and divorce is one of them. Uh, job transfer, things like that, things, you know, deaths, whatever else. So there are, there are some exceptions, but as a general rule, um, and what they're going after, of course, is the people that are flipping properties, guys that are buying properties, renovating and flipping them, but they're also going after the guys that are doing straight flips. Like in how many properties in 2021 did we buy and sell six months later for a couple hundred thousand dollars profit? Tons, right? No? 30 for six months, some cases. <clears throat> you know, so I want some, some people bought property in 2021 and then resold it for a $200,000 profit. I'm looking at I'm looking at everybody here. No, no one knows. No one knows who did that. Somebody who made three hundred thousand dollars. Anyways, under the new rules, yeah. under the new rules, that property is is one hundred percent taxable, like the the profit. The two hundred. The two hundred thousand profit. And it's not capital gain. It's considered straight income. So that's that's a new law that's changed this year. Right? Twelve months at threshold. Yeah. Yeah. Twelve months. Uh, I talked to a couple weeks ago about Airbnb. And I wasn't quite clear what the rules are, so I've read up on it a little bit, and I'm a little more clear what's going on. And, and uh, some people are getting uh, ripped off with this now to the public. <clears throat> so you cannot Airbnb in Toronto. I don't care outside Toronto. In Toronto itself, you cannot Airbnb a house unless it's your principal residence. In other words, you have to live there, and you can Airbnb a room or basement or something like that, right? That's what you can do legally, unless it is over 28 days and it's over 28 days and it's considered to be a long-term rental. It's not covered under the, under those rules. But what's happening here when I'm reading is some people are, are getting stuff and they're, they're uh, getting a, uh, let's say an eight month Airbnb to, to get them in between houses or jobs, whatever they're doing. And then the landlord says after two months, no, no, I changed my mind. You have to get out. It doesn't fall under the landlord tenants act. It doesn't fall under anything. So, so, so they're not protected. So now the landlord says, okay, get it, <laughs> right? It's not a rental. It's like a hotel. So it's kind of good for landlords, but not, not very good for the guy that's uh, that's renting them. So I'm not sure. Do they even pay commission? I don't think they do, right? Do you have any clients that want to, to do Airbnb? Anybody? <laughs> Doesn't matter? 
And then finally, I'm going to finish early today. The best and worst appreciated neighborhoods in GTA. Just to give you some clarity here, right? So what happened in uh, Q1 versus Q4? So Q1, which would, would be January, February, March 2022, that was the peak. So these are all peak. And then the end of the year would be the valley, right? <laughs> the valley. So King Township. These aren't these aren't high volume places, they're high prices. So the King Township during those two periods went from average prices of 3.2 to 1.9. Now I, I I sort of there might have been two houses that sold, right? That's what I'm getting out of here. So maybe two houses, maybe one house sold at 3.2 and the next house sold at 1.9. So you really can't take that. But if you look at uh, Markham, Devil's Elbow, where's Devil's Elbow in Markham? Anybody know? That's a community. Is that Devil's Elbow. Mm -hmm. I want to think. I want to think around Glen. What's that? Uh, Angus Glen. Angus Area. Anyway, so the average price there four point six and two point nine. So it's minus thirty six. Uh, Toronto Hillcrest Village, North York. 2.025 2 to 1.336. Minus 34%. Mississauga Streetsville, 1.7 down to 1.1. So there's some big ones out there, right? But the funny part is that these guys sold. Toronto York Mills was one of the better ones. So ones that appreciated the most, same in the same areas. Let me just get one here that's right. Um, Toronto Yorkville went from 2.8 to 2.9. Went up. Toronto Somerville went from 2.6 to 2.8. Pickering Rosebank 1.6 to 1.7. So it's not all areas that are down, right? So some areas are actually up. So if you've got somebody in that particular area, have a look yourself, and maybe if you're doing your phone call and door knocking, you know that your prices have gone up, right? These are these are areas that that you might want to. I want to think about it. called moose moose sparling. Okay, good. Anybody have any problems you want to talk about? Alex. So uh Alex has one on Simcoe Street in Simcoe, or sorry, in Oshawa. You've listed now at eight point, sorry, eight eight nine. Eight eight ninety nine. Trying to get one point. Well, close to a million bucks. Like a million dollars, right? And it's been in the market now. It started off at one point two. One point one. And then you dropped it down to. Never, never there. Okay, so one point one. So now you dropped eight nine nine. Hold off offers. Okay. Anybody else have something they want to talk about? Well, what happened to the shipping space? No. What. No, I'm just wondering. Oh, Shafiq had a place where the guy paid, unfortunately, paid 1.3, put another $100,000 in, in uh, renovations, and now we're hoping to get a million dollars. 1.1, Is it right on Bellamy? Yeah. Here, Senate, have a, have a quick check. Anybody else? It took a lot of time to do that. Anybody have any buyers they want to talk about? No. Buyers they want to talk about? No, no, no. no, no. Did anybody, has anybody done their, mo their Moxie work stuff? Has anybody got their, we talked about the email uh, campaigns and all that stuff. Did everybody get the, all those things going? You get the set up and all the end of the emails out. Uh, but uh, you know, the, uh, support desk and they're still they've escalated it. Have you got the answer? Did you do the castle step? What did you do the second step? The castle step. Yeah, I did. Like, I did it, it sent me one email, then I did yeah, additional one. Nothing. So we'll talk. So, yeah, so we'll talk. We'll talk about it. Let me, we'll do that right now if you want. So, anybody else? Okay, folks. So, uh, that's it.
still up. If Pers if Percy were alive, his birthday was yesterday. He would have been ninety eight. Ninety eight. Oh, yeah. Right. If Percy was alive, he would have been ninety eight yesterday. Because because I'm, I'm thinking about that because the mayor passed right. The Mississauga mayor passed at what 101, 102? 101. Wow, good for her. I know so many people that die at ninety nine. Good for her. Yeah, almost. Yeah. Good. Yeah, that's anything else. Go 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 go. Looks like she changed the update. Okay, okay. okay folks all right so we'll see you next uh hopefully wednesday so come wednesday we have a uh session going on to talk about uh caleb what's he what's this wednesday session it's a tax seminar okay good all right so it's an account or just a tax seminar with ruby from okay all right so see you all next week thanks implications Look at this.